let me show you a cool trick for creating really smooth transitions between bevels on converging edges in plasticity. So normally, if I had a situation like this and was trying to bevel these edges, I would first, you know, bevel this one, and then I would try to, be you know, bevel all these. Now, there's a cool tool in plasticity. So when you start beveling, you could just select this one chordal and it should work. Sometimes it doesn't like you see in here. Uh, so what you could do instead is try another tool which is called um, bridge surfaces, right? So you click here, you drag your mouse and you when you run edge, but you see uh, this is all fine, but then I would still need to run another in you know, another bevel in here, right? Like this, and I'm gonna have the same issue here, triangle in the middle. So sometimes you just, you know, you have no choice, you're gonna have to fix it manually, okay? So when I'm gonna run this bevel here, even if I run chordal, you see chordal will not work. So I'm gonna do it manually here and create this kind of like a bevel. And you see my mesh is kind of creating a triangle here, right? And this is gonna look really nasty. So when you rotate your camera, you can see this kind of like a nasty, you know, shading here, right? So the way you, you know, so the way you fix this, okay, you need to do this manually, you need to have some patience for it too. So first of all, we're gonna do, we're gonna create edges here with Shift A, and we're gonna imprint them. So if you don't have a radial menu, this is a radial menu, go to F menu and simply look for imprint, right? Select the curve and then imprint on this mesh here. And that didn't work well, so let's just uh, imprint it uh, using the normal feature here, there we go. Then another edge, probably somewhere here. So Shift Q again, come on. Shift Q and imprint and normal, and then one more in here, right? So Shift Q and imprint and normal, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all these, and technically what you could do, you could combine them with patch, but you got these kind of, uh, you know, sharp corners here. It might work and sometimes it will not work. So, you know, if you're really in a hurry, you could do this. I wouldn't recommend it. I would go a step further, but you see it's creating a better connection, right? What you may want to do to make it even better is to select these edges and bridge them, okay? So you want to bridge these and then you want to bridge these, right? And you also want to bridge these, right? So just bridge, run a bridge command, okay? And you select all of them and you imprint them on this mesh, right? Then you delete all this nonsense with Shift X. And we can just nuke these curves, we don't need them. And then you Alt click here, so you're gonna have a much cleaner, kind of a smoother connection. Uh, and then you can patch it with, I don't think G2 will work, no, just G1, right? But that looks much cleaner and this is gonna shade way better in, you know, in Blender. Now we got some issue here, which is kind of interesting but we can fix this. So let me see this here. Let me just nuke this nonsense. In fact, nuke this one as well. And I'm going to patch this whole thing here. Uh, patch it and whoops, one more time. Shift F and patch it and G1. And let's see that. See now it's much cleaner, right? So when you export it to Blender, it's going to look really clean. And this is basically the way I fix bevels. And there's one more way, the old one, when you're using a pipe. So I'll show it to you in a minute. So if I'm gonna connect to Plasticity and Live Link, you see when you, when you bring it to Blender, it's gonna look really, really nice, right? Now, you know, this is all triangulated, but we can fix this by simply going to end goal advanced and we could adjust these values here to make them a little bit, um, a little bit uh, more dense. Maybe the angle to like 15 or something. Here to 15, right? And just refast it. And there you go. You know, it's gonna look, look pretty dope, right? So you know, that's how I would approach this. Okay, and. Another way of doing this would be to run a run a pipe. This is the old method. So if everything fails and there's just no way you can run a bevel, just run a pipe. So you go Shift D on the edge that you selected, 
you want to extend this I just using extend command okay past this uh, past this geometry here right so shift Q and extend it and you want to select this uh, this entire uh, curve and pipe it and what you want to do now is you want to select the mesh queue and boolean it with the pipe right so one more time Q and boolean there we go and then you need to remove these faces here in the middle and you're gonna have to patch this hole here which is easy right because you select these two edges shift Q and you know you can run a bridge here right shift that patch it and G1 didn't work for some reason hang on maybe we should just do it again shift Q and bridge there we go and then select this one and patch it G1 okay and you do the same thing on the top then you connect this one and then you just you know fill it with the bevel right so if you're going to you know um, let's say I'm gonna have another edge here like this oh, that's not gonna work it's gonna have to be here here right shift Q and imprint it there we go then I'm gonna bridge these two so let's select this entire uh, shape here shift F and patch it right and obviously G0 here so you see that's how you're gonna be able to kind of fix this you know but that's that's a bit you know that's a bit tiresome and, and takes a lot of time this is why I would suggest to use the uh, bridge command which is really good so F and you know bridge surfaces this is fantastic right or simply try to run a chordal uh, chordal bevel as much as you can so if you go to bevel right and you create a bevel like this you can switch it to chordal and it's going to fix you know the width of the bevel on difficult surfaces but again sometimes you can't do it and sometimes even chordal bevel going to create some weird transitions so you want to go ahead and fix them manually like I showed you, right? And there you go. If you need help fixing your hard surface modeling issues fast with one-to-one -one support, weekly coaching calls, and full access to all of our Blender and Plasticity courses, then keep watching. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You cannot model anything without a tutorial. Your shading, bevels and bullions break and no matter how many tutorials you watch, you are not improving. If this is you, then join our Hard Surface Academy. You get lifetime access to all of our courses, six months of private one-to-one -one support with Josh and I, plus weekly coaching calls where we fix your issues in real time. If you want personal guidance and modeling workflow that actually works, click the link below and learn more about the program. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.